when you see this, I didn't steal your sign, man. I thought about it, but I, I ain't do it. This is by you guys' water fountain. This is powerful stuff. Sometimes we, we take stuff for granted, but this is very powerful stuff. This is all about the Christian walk right here. This is what it's about. It talks about be encouraging. It talks about all the things. Because sometimes in, in, in our Christian walk, we're trying to, we're trying to walk and, and convince people how godly we are. We, <laughs> the only good in us is in the Holy Spirit in us, okay? And so, so, but this is good reminder. Hey, babe, can you put this in trunk? No, I'm just kidding. But, but anyway, so the bottom line is, uh, okay, be hopeful. Be patient. Be open. Be encouraging. Be honest. Be honest. Be forgiving. Be accepting. Be fearless. Be supportive. Be thankful and be loving. Let me get the elephant out of the room. Uh, I don't wear a mask. It's not a political statement. I don't wear a mask even because I'm, I am a Viking fan, but hey, I like crying. What can I say? In, I, in our weakness, he's made strong. So that's why I'm a Viking fan. <laughs> but I want you to understand that all the stuff that's going on in the world, all the political stuff, we on the side. Listen, it's okay. You, you should be involved. But I want you to understand something. God is in control and in charge. Okay? And we should never let anything stand between us and our Lord that we serve. You understand what I'm saying? Whether if you're red or blue or purple or whatever, your political stuff. I'm a, I have a degree in political science, so I understand it perhaps more than most people, than the average person anyway, and I've been a captain in the army. So I understand a lot of this stuff. But none of us really know all of the truth of what's going on behind the scene. So we, we, it's okay if you want to support this or support that. The church stay out of it because the church, just for those of, who, of you who don't know why churches aren't supposed to su uh, support a candidate or a, uh, a campaign, is because churches are non-exempt. 501c3 means you're tax-exempt. Church doesn't have to pay. If you start doing that, if you part, start putting signs out here, you can do that at your house. You put signs out here in front of revolution, they, they're going to probably yank your... Your, your tax extent, exempt status. But that's just information, just so that you know it. But listen, we're about Jesus. See, when Jesus come back through the cloud, it ain't going to matter you're a Democrat or Republican or, or confused or crack. I just made that up. No, I don't know. Yeah, you don't know anymore. I don't like none of me. We say, I'm going to just be on independent. Okay. Whatever that is. <laughs> Point is, we're in Christ. And so today and from here forth, even on November 3rd, Christ is what matters. You and I may not vote the same. But I'm going to love you just as much today, tomorrow, and November 3rd. So I want to get that, I want to get that cleared up this morning now. So and I went mad and I said, my, 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 my grandbaby is coming soon. I don't want to take no chances, you see. In fact, my daughter just said, she came out right, it, it, baby's bouncing and jumping. Cause this is the first time she heard her papa preach. <laughs> first time she heard her papa, pa, she ain't heard papa preach yet, but she's very much keenly aware that papa is, is speaking now. So when my wife and I come into the house, she starts bouncing and moving. Gigi and Papa's here now. So I want you to be encouraged today because as we preach, as we spend this time together, and like I said, when I'm preaching the word, it's just the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. That's his time. But I, I like for us to understand as we move forward in life that the, the stuff that we involve ourselves in daily, uh, it, we're in the world, but we're not of it. So we must remember uh, whose we are and who we belong to uh, as we deal with our daily. Because some of our neighbors, the only Christ they're going to see is us. I was talking to a neighbor the other day, and I thought, you know, me and the brother, we got to be real good friends in my neighborhood. And, and we, they don't really know me as Pastor Bob in my neighborhood. They just know me as Theo. But they're getting to know me. They say, why is he so nice? Then, you know. It, it ain't me, it's Christ in me, but the, but the brother I've become to get real close uh, with him, and, and I'll share this because I'm open. It says, be open. I'm open, I'm honest, and I tell the truth, but the brother went on and he joined the church. He said, man, I want to join the church. He go, his wife was going, and then he would go occasionally with her, and then he went with her one Sunday. He felt good, I guess. He walked down there and joined the church, you know, Baptist church, and so 
So I was excited. I said, man, the brother is rich. So I started getting him a daily a devotional and trying to share the word with him and setting up time. And I want to disciple the brother. And he joined the church on Christian experience. And I was telling Brother Calvin, I said, what the heck does that mean? Actually, I didn't say it that way. We got kids, so I'll be, I'll be cool. But I said, what does that mean? That means you go into church? Okay, you go to church. But it's about relationship, man. I could tell the more and more the brother talked. It was about, and I'm thinking, see, back when I was a pastor and I was in a denomination, and people come say, they join the church on Christian experience. If I'm in your pastor now, you join this church, I want to know about your Christian experience. See, God, if I don't know you, I'm going to call the last pastor. Hey, what? man, that joker didn't come to church but once a year, and he, he really wasn't serious. No. Now, I want to know if you know Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I'm throwing that in because I'm open. When I preach, listen, I do my part in the Holy Spirit. I do, I'm honest. I'm real with people. I'm real. I'm not perfect. Amen. When I, when I first, my first 10 years as a Methodist pastor, man, and before my baby, Oh, I'm gonna tell you about her in a minute. But before my baby was born, I'll be honest with people, man. And I and I preach under the anointing, but and I won't get too far lost here. But I want us to know that it is about Jesus. It's about our relationship. We are in the world, but we're not of it. Do you know that you and I have dual citizenship? We have citizenship in heaven already. That means He gives us spiritual powers to deal with this life we're in here now. But until we go be with Him, we gotta be here. And we ain't perfect. We ain't perfected until we go be with him. But he is changing us from the inside outward. So don't get b- bad and beat yourself up when you make a mistake or think a bad thought. Just, oh, God. No, listen, we're not perfected yet. We're going to deal with this flesh here until he comes for us. But meanwhile, he's changing us. The more time we spend with him, the more we're like him. And he's changing us. So I just want to say those things. And see. And I said my brother Callaway is here, brother Deacon Callaway. Now this brother here, he, you know, this brother here, I listen, my birthday is I'm older than him. And you can't tell. I'm 65 already. July 7th. 65. I'm Medicare. <laughs> Woo-hoo. I ain't never think I'd be happy about getting older, but boy, it's cool to be retired. Ooh-wee. <laughs> Man, when I used to work and pass, I'd preach my heart out. And so I'd be so tired. I'd go on Sunday afternoon, take a nap. And I ain't like them churches where you have evening, sir. You go back, I'm dead tired. And Monday morning, I got to go to somebody's job. I ain't like that. <laughs> and like the same brother I was just talking about, he, he, he in the church, he, we, we were talking out in the yard on lawnmowers. He just, he just don't understand, man. Well, why they got to pay the preachers? Because I said, wait a minute, man. Do you, do you not understand? You go to the doctor, you pay them? Well, yeah, because they're looking after your body. Do you understand that we pick pouring into your soul eternity? We just couldn't get with that. And him and he, a couple of neighbors, they couldn't, they were all mixed up on that money. So anyway, but long story is we are in the world, but we're not of it. Right. Now, I don't know if y'all can do pictures. And I, my daughter, when she was growing up, she got embarrassed a lot because, because, what I said, did I say your birthday tomorrow? That's what I didn't tell him. His birthday is tomorrow. I turned 65 in July. Now, he don't look like it, but I, he turned 65 tomorrow. See, we go way back. Yeah, we go way back. Brother, I wasn't going to tell it, but brother, listen. But but the, the, the point is, is that uh, this brother and I have been through a lot of stuff together. And now we serve our Lord, our risen Savior, together. Man, that's so awesome. Now, let me get back to my daughter. Now, you, you, you can't do pictures up on that screen. I don't want to, when she was growing up, uh, and she and my wife, they never knew what I was going to preach on. And my wife, y'all see her sometimes, she's gone. But anyway, this is the, the picture of my baby when she was born. Right after she was born, we dressed her up. But the thing is, is that she, uh, I started preaching. God called me to the ministry when I was uh, 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 39. It seemed like it was just yesterday, but. 39 to me is now sound like a baby, but 39. And 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 then I turned 40, and she was born when I was 40, and I was I was preaching the gospel, but if something happened from the time she, uh, when I was 39 and started, I was a pretty good preacher. I didn't want to do it. If you find people who want to do this, run from them. 
God had to t- do, take a burning bush with Moses to, to convince Moses to go do his work. And Moses, I ain't, I ain't doing that. He said, can't, can't, can't you get, get, get somebody else to do it? I, I can't, 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 can't even speak right. God said, boy, look at here. I'll get your tongue right. And beside that, I'm going to send your brother with, it, with you. So all the excuses that everybody else in the Bible use, uh, uh, I use too, God. I ain't good enough. I don't speak well enough. I don't know how to do this. So if you meet somebody and say, I always want to be a preacher, you better run. Because most people who do this know that you're going to suffer if you do this now. Okay, don't be crazy. And see, people always tell you, well, a pastor ought to do this. You ever been a pastor? Well, no, but I didn't. No, you don't know. Well, stop telling people about stuff you don't know nothing about. You got, everybody got an opinion now. Oh, send us, send us your opinion. You don't know. Man, let me tell you something. So it was about, I was 39 years. I was young once. Had hair, had hair. I had my picture where I had big afro, man. Y'all go, whoa. <laughs> Joe, remember we had them afro, brother? <laughs> yeah, I'm that old. And see what I'm doing now? You know I retired from preaching. Moses, you can't retire. You can't. I'm retired. Now, God has let me do some other stuff. So if I do this right, if I keep doing this, spare at least part. I, I might get a job as a part-time comedian. You know, I, yeah. I'm working on it. You know what I'm saying? My 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 grandbaby gonna need some money now, and I'm so I might need to start hitting some of these stages and try to be a part-time comedian. But anyway, so 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 I learned after my daughter was born, uh, if something happened to me, if you've never had a child, then then perhaps you you may not quite understand yet. But God can use other things. But I want you to understand, so when you look in that newborn's eyes, something happens to you that never happened before. You fall in love in a way that you have never, ever been. Amen. If you've been there now, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, now I may look like it, but I ain't never carried no baby. (laughs) But something happens when you look at this little helpless little piece of flesh. And like I said, everybody, that baby's so cute. And be honest with you, you all, when you go by the nurse the next time you look over in there, they don't let you do it now because of COVID. But you go over there, you see all the baby, hey, they're so cute. Now they're little sinners. <laughs> 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 now we love them and God loves them. But you fall in love at a level that you never experienced. I was a pretty good preacher because I always relied on the Holy Spirit to speak through me. That's, that's the only reason to do this. But after my daughter was born, I became a better preacher, better pastor. Why? Because he showed me something I didn't see before, a level of love that I had never experienced. Bear with me today, because when, you leave, when we leave here today, I want, I want to have left you, because I'm attention deficit and I bounce all over the place, bear with me, pray for me, but I want you to leave here today with a deeper understanding how much God loves you. How much God loves us. And how every phase of our lives he's there. And he loves you. When you want to beat yourself up about mistakes or stuff you do, he loves you. God is never surprised. We, we get... Man, man my daughter, come on, she prayed. What? God was not surprised. Because when God do things, he knows what he's doing. He, his timing is perfect timing. See, we said, look at him, next week, Thursday, and then, and then next year this time. And Man, come on. God knows. And he's never surprised. And everything he has programmed in our lives is for our good because he loves us that much. He gives us 24 hours. They call, that's all we can handle. We can't handle no more than that. See, when we start worrying about what's going to happen next week and then next year and, and my children's education, we're getting into God's business and say, hey, I want to control what's going to happen so I can be comfortable. God said, no, 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 no. You belong to me now. I call the shots. 
But remember, you can trust me with your life. See, see, people say, I, I, I'm, a, I, I'm enjoying my Christian experience. I'm going to church. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Will you trust him with your life? Will you trust him in the midst of chaos? Remember, I said we have, two, we have dual citizenship. When the chaos is going on here, you got to understand you keep your connection with the heavenly realm, and you won't get caught up in, in, in fearful and anxious over all of this stuff. The world puts so much at us all the time. It's coming for you, man. I'm telling you, when you get up in the morning, it, I'm telling you, before you can get out of bed, here it comes. Boy, I get out of bed, and, I, and, and now I got a little dog. Man, he's cool. Oh, Jason, Jason, the beast. My daughter, daughter got him when he was 15. Yeah, I call him the beast because in our neighbor, he's even 12 pounds. He jump all the big dogs. He cool with little dog, but he want to jump. I said, man, come on. I told people I walk him in. If I, if we got in our neighborhood, we got gators. We in Florida, we got gators, bears on. He'll fight a gator and a bear until they eat him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So every morning, here, every morning, I wake up, he can tell me I'm awake. <laughs> and he's a good dog. He sleeps under the bed. I don't, I don't sleep with a dog in my bed, okay? Me and mama, so I, that, that's okay if you do, but I'm just saying. But So he gets up every morning. The first, as soon as I'm up, he wants my attention. I said, dog, listen, man, I got to get God. I can't get with God first, man. He got, yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. So I put him off most days, have him a cup of coffee, sit down with what, what's called Jesus Calling. It's a little daily devotion. If you haven't gotten one, get your hands on one because I've been doing it now for about, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And, and it's this, this, this missionary, Sarah Young, where she was on missionary for all those years in dangerous places and scary places. And, and she totally gave her life over to God. And she wrote down the conversations between her and God. And I'm telling you, man, every day, I got my day. Yeah, I, I give them to people because it's my daily devotional. It's that time where Jesus speaking to it, to you, speaking to your heart. You say, "Hi, I, this is specific to me." Yeah, He knows that. He loves you. He knows that much about you, and He knows. So this is the, my quiet every day, and I'll fight the dog, the world, and everybody else so I can have that time. I have more. I spend more time with God now. Then when I was pastoring, I spent more time. More, come on, man. Come minister with me. You can't be retired. No, I'm good. I walk with God so much every day. I'm in tune so that it doesn't matter what come in the mail, no matter what phone call, no matter what bad news. I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I maintain. I keep my peace. When stuff happens that I totally didn't expect, I realize God ain't surprised. So yeah, I keep my peace because I'm trusting him. In the election, I'm trusting God. Because regardless of who's in the White House, do you, do you understand that God is in control of all of that? <laughs> well, what if this happened? What if that? What if what? Don't matter. Jesus. That's my peace. So today, if nothing else, when I'm done, and I'll eventually get the scripture, but, but, but I want you to know at the end of today how much God loves us. No matter what we face, no matter what's going on in the world, he loves you. No matter what you've done, he loves you. No matter how, how much stuff tries to come after you, and, and life will, it'll come after you. But that's why I start my day first with God. I said, God, remind me before I go out there that you're the one. It's all about you. And you know what I'm going to face today. I don't. I have my little schedule. But Lord, you have permission to interrupt my schedule to do whatever you want to do. Now, it's easier when you retire like me. Because I keep my schedule to a minimum. My schedule is easy. When I get up in the morning, I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to walk the dog. And when I turn my phone on, it was two people. I interrupt everything for my wife and my daughter. If they call me and I'm talking to you, I'm going to say, hold up. I said, one of these bosses done called me, so <laughs> let me see what he <laughs> And the other day, they both called me. One of my aunties, I said, man, listen, I got to go. But being retired, my, my schedule is like that. And I love that because as long as I can spend time with God and spend time with my family, those are the priority. Now, I do a lot more things. I do a lot of stuff. But those are my priorities. 
And what God has so taught me in living in two realms is that some stuff we need to let go of. Don't try to fix it. You don't have the power to fix it. People bring you their stuff. But you and I have to know when to say, oh, no, thank you. Can't help you today. I'm going to pray for you. People say, well, I can't do nothing. When we pray for each other, that's powerful. Are y'all hearing me? I want us to be so sensitive that we understand in the kingdom of God, which we are citizens of, we can do things that's powerful. The Bible said in James, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. much. Yeah, sometimes we don't think we're the righteous, but we are. If we're in Christ Jesus, we're righteous. If you're here today, you're not in Christ Jesus, you ain't righteous. You just kind of wait until something happens. But the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. So, Let me try to get back to where I'm going. I want you at the end of the day now, remember that God loves you. He'll move heaven and earth for you. If you messed up, get up. Don't worry about it. Confess that thing, repent, move on. People have hurt you, forgive them. But they don't, don't worry about it. God got them in check. (laughs) Do you know that God can fix people and things better than you? So you hear, yeah, yeah, and that little baby's born, man. You look at that little thing, you say, you say, you say, well, listen now, man, you love that thing so much. And if anybody, I don't care what kind of animal you see, if you hurt their young or they think you're going to hurt their young, look out. Amen? You ever see it? You think about it. You, you wander up on a, a place where a gator or something, they, they, they should stay away from now when they doing whatever they do and they got their babies. You don't know where you're going. You wander up on that thing and they, you wonder why they're attacking you. Bears, you wonder why. you mess messing with them cubs if you want to or go near them. You don't even know. Anything human, uh, any animal will kill you to protect their young. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Hopefully you are too. But God knows how to protect his own better than we can. That's why when God told me when, when she was a little old baby, baby in that in that bassinet, he said, I'll watch over her myself. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. I'll watch over her myself. What he said to me, I know the word. God, dispatch, I know 91st Psalm. Dispatch your, he'll dispatch his angels to keep charge over you. To watch over you, dear, now, so you don't dash your foot against us. He, I dispatch. I said, God, dispatch your angels. He said, I watch over her myself. So you can you can rest knowing, I got her. Whew. Loves him. He, he he loves my child more than I do. That's hard to imagine. So anyway, I'm gonna get to some scripture. So I always said, man, this joker come preaching. When he gonna get the scripture? Remember last time y'all had to help me. Remember? Thank you, brother. You had to help me. I'm attention deficit. You got to help me. Pull me back the way. Help the preacher. Because I, I the mean, Holy Spirit, I just go, man. I'm, I'm, I'm free. Because he said the word is mine, the people mine, the results are mine. I don't perform. I preach the word of God as he gives it to me. And I share my real life experiences because when I'm telling you what I'm telling you, I have lived it. I know the word. I've, walked, I've been walking with God 35 years. I know the word and I've had to walk it out. So when I'm telling you, I ain't joking. I'm telling you what I know. I want you to be as confident in your relationship with God like I am because I had to walk it out. Whew. See why he called? You know, God called people to preach and to be. I see some of these kids are so bad. I mean, these kids ain't bad. Yeah, some of them bad, man. Some of them bad, just always in everything. I say, gonna be a preacher problem. <laughs> <laughs> Mamas be going, man. This boy, he does everything. This girl, man, they're just crazy. They do everything. Probably gonna be a preacher. <laughs> Man, I tried the hard way to do everything at least once. <laughs> but God says, I've saved you for a time because I'm going to come to you and I'm going to convert your crazy self. You don't even know it. <laughs> People say, I got one foster son. He said, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't know God. I don't believe God. Well, he believe in you. You just keep on doing stupid. He'll, he'll get you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
keep on doing stupid. Then one day he's going to say, hey, okay, come here. Come here. Come on, go with me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's real, man. That's life. It's real. Life comes at you. But boy, when God get a hold of your heart, now nah, you're going to. Again, you ain't don't mean you perfect it. Ain't none of us perfect it. Okay? But day by day, the more you walk in this word, the more he changes your heart. Because we begin to see not just from an earthly perspective. We all got the other than five senses, six senses, how many? I don't know. We all got that natural thing. But he gives us supernatural. Okay? But he had to slap us up a little bit first, you know. Because, like I said, you know, we do that thing. And it, forgive me if I said the wrong words in, in church. We are the church, but uh, sometimes I just, I'm talking to you like me and God talk every day. So sometimes I might say something. To, Ooh, I try to be sensitive that there are children here. But, but I want you to understand, God ain't done with me yet now. Okay? God ain't done yet. So I want to share that with you because the, the, what I want you leaving here today is knowing that God loves you no matter how much you mess up and have messed up and no matter what has happened in your life and no matter what people do or try to do to you because some things they're going to try to do. do you know that the enemy already planned for you to he tried to kill you every day you just don't know it amen now my like I said I will not be I won't embarrass my daughter today but you know I, man, my, I, she, she said something today that reminded me I always said to her I love you more than life itself and, uh, and, and and she really do. She, she, I really do. And she's everything to me. Uh, but we have to live in this realm. And and uh, God is so good. And, you know, uh, uh, we have to communicate to the ones we love and with with people we communicate. And I love my daughter more than life. And and I tell you what, she and I, man, we go places that mama don't even dare to go sometimes. <laughs> and and so, but but but, we, but I love her more than life itself. Now, I probably would be okay if I don't ride with her much. She drives and she ain't scared. <laughs> if you ride with her, you scared. <laughs> uh, Jesus, I'm coming now. I said, girl, who taught you how to drive? You did, Daddy. Not like that. <laughs> Bless her heart. We just bought her a new car. And, man, Mama and, her, Mama and I got in the car riding with her. The day, man. Mama's back. Mama always, I know it's my wife's smart. She always want to get in the back seat. So she in the back seat trying to tell her how to drive. And I'm sitting in the front seat. And I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and nobody likes you to tell them. Sitting up when they driving, and she get mad. You, know, you old people, that was the she drive the dump truck. The lights coming on. The brake light. Don't you gonna stop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gonna doing something like that too? Okay. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with it, but I love her more than life. I love her more than life. <laughs> She lives in Daytona. <laughs> I think she thinks she she must have got on that track at some point. <laughs> hey, she can do that. And my, my wife would see something in the news on in Daytona, and she I'm going to get my baby. You, she drives like them. You ain't got to go get her. <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway, God taught me how to love when my baby was born. And of course, you know we we like to think that the love that we have shared with her she will be able to share with her daughter, our granddaughter, and we continue. But I want you to leave here today knowing that God loves you. I'm going to start my reading. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to get the scripture. But I, I'd like to be real with people because people say, I went to church today. Well, what you learned? Well, you know, I, I don't know. He came from church. I want you to understand that we have to go back into the real life. Most of the time, the enemy ain't going to bother you too much in church, although he will, can but when you go out of here, you got to live in this realm, man. And we got to know. We got to get a deep down. So when you come to church, it's like going to the doctor or the hospital. You, you get fixed up, passed up, so you can remember. You get stitched up. See, because some, some of them have been cut this week, and, and you got to get fixed up so you know God's got you, no matter how painful things are. God's got you. I spent my whole life trying to help my daughter and say, God's got you. He's going to take care of you. He told me that he, he will watch over you himself. And, he, and that's better than I can do. And I love you more than life. And, and the young people go, yeah, whatever. 
But as a parent, that's comforting. And the more we learn and the more we walk with him daily, we feel his presence. See, because now when I pray for people, I say, Lord, let them feel your very presence in that situation. Let them feel your presence in whatever they're going through. When you go to the mailbox or you go to the doctor and you get bad news, you need God's presence. You need to feel his presence. You need to feel his presence. Well, God said, God said, uh, my, my mother only got eight months. Well, the doctor ain't God. You need to feel God's presence. Whew. Because when we start to walk in the spirit realm, understanding how much he loves us, if he allows our loved one to go and allows us to go, we got to know and understand that we're going from here to his presence. Boy, it took me a while to get there. All the years I did funerals, it took me a while to get there. Because every time, even now when people die, it, it's bothering me less and less. But it used to be a time when people die, even as a pastor, it just disturbed me. Wait a minute. The word said, be absent from the body is to be present. Now, we all know this. But boy, when them emotions get tied up, the more and more God is showing me. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, Brother Jay, <laughs> they had fun up there, baby. We trying to get there. We trying to get there. You should have a saying, say, everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody want to die. Well, that's how you get there. I'm like some people. I don't wait till he come in the cloud. Jesus! <laughs> Be changed in the twinkling of an eye. I'm going to have hair then, baby. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? What I'm saying is we have to live in this realm, but we have to know that we know that we know that God loves us. And even when we mess up, he loves us. Your children mess up, you still love them. The dumbest thing I ever heard people say, well, my child messed up, so I disowned him. Man, you crazy. Suppose God disowned us when we mess up. And some Christians say, oh, I messed up so bad. Are you kidding me? You think you messed up bad enough then the God surprised, so now he mad with you. Are you crazy? Well, maybe your parents treated you like that. I don't know. But you cannot mess up bad enough for God to disown you. So we go around life trying to be perfect or pretending to be perfect. Because we know ourselves. We know. Now, we can put on our pretties and go to church and act like everything cool with us. And you know you. And God knows you. And he still loves you. He knows what you're going to do tomorrow and what I'm going to do tomorrow. And he loves me anyway. When he gave his son on that cross, it was for everything that you have done, everything that you're thinking about doing, and everything that you might do in the future. He already knows. And he loves us in, 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 anyway and, and gave his only begotten son. So we saved. Now I ain't saying you live like, live like a fool. What I'm saying, amen? Well, God loves me. Why am I going to run from this truck? Okay, you going to see him? Mm -hmm. But he loves us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. Never. So that with that, I'm going to go in the Old Testament a little bit, and then I go in the New Testament. You know, I'm not real long winded. I, I try to be real with you, share, let the Holy Spirit have his way, and when the Holy Spirit says shut off, I shut off. Now, in the Old Testament, I'm going to go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and 32, but I want you to understand that in the Old Testament, uh, God did a lot of stuff in the Old Testament. People say, well, we got Old Testament and New Testament. We got all these books, 66 books. But why? Well, because in the Old Testament is, is and people say, well, now I'm a Christian. I don't have to do the Old Testament. Don't worry about all that. What the Old Testament is definitely there for is to help us have a foundation of how God operates and how he did in times of past. The New Testament tells us more about what Jesus, his life and what he did afterwards in the beginning of the church, which is the book of Acts and forward. And of course, the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John is when he walked the earth. So I'm just giving a little basic background in case there's someone here that's young or new in Christ. You don't know say I want us to understand that in the Old Testament, sometimes God did things differently than when Jesus came later. See, in the Old Testament, sometimes people did wrong and messed up. God just zip. See, if I were God, I'd be like that. You messed up, zip, you gone. 
<laughs> That's why I ain't God. Man, how many people you want to kill for messing up if you were God? And one time God let them do. God, God let them people out of Egypt got over there. They constantly complain. God said, be careful about your murmuring. He killed kill off a whole bunch of them in one day. God, yeah. Yeah. God told Noah, I'm so fed up with the world, these old sinful people I made. And, and, and look at them now. He wiped out, I'm going to wipe out the whole world. No, God, don't do that. He said, I'm going to wipe them out. You better go build a boat. <laughs> build a boat. Yeah, boy, it's going to rain. And what, what's rain? What's rain? So here old silly Noah, uh, 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 Noah, 120 years building this thing called a boat for something that's going to happen called rain. It had never had waterfall from the sky before. So everybody run, huh? It, in the desert, right. And everybody laughing at this foolish man working on this silly tub, a big wooden tub called a boat, an ark, so he could save people from the world. You know, God is funny. He don't do things instantly sometimes. Took Noah, and I don't know why I get that. Again, y'all have to help me. I ain't mean to go there. But he took Noah 120 years to build the ark. You know, people still doing what they want to do. I didn't get mad. God saying, I'm going to wipe y'all out. You suckers don't even know. You're going to flood. God, but God said, you go tell them, Noah, you go tell them. And, and sometimes when we get discouraged as a preacher, sometimes our churches don't grow. Sometimes our people act like they don't get it. I was a young pastor. I remember I went to the hospital to visit one of my uh, parishioners, one of the guys in the church. When they got up there and the hospital had surgery, hip surgery or something. And I came and he said, the guy up there laying up there in pain and I come in and look like I'm, di I'm discouraged. I'm tired. Hey, brother, I'll come and see you. Pastor, what's the matter, man? He said, I'm all right. What's, what's up with you? Man, I'm just, man, you know, I preach. I, I do everything I know to do, man, and people just don't seem to get it. He said, hey, Pastor, he said, how many people got on the ark with Noah? So I started to count. Noah, his wife, and the wife probably didn't really want to go. She said, it's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how y'all get now. I'm free to my wife and gun, Mom. And don't tell her what I said. She said to me, hey, is there a way that I get this live while you preach? I'm thinking, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to see what I said. <laughs> anyway, so Noah, his wife, their kids, and, and spouse, or whatever. So eight people, they tell me, got on the, on the 120 years of preaching, eight people got on the, on the ark. 120 years of preaching. Eight people got on. Now, God knew this when he told Noah to do what he did. But you know, God will tell, have you do stuff he know it ain't going to work. <laughs> my, my, my wife and I talk about this all the time. We laugh. We say, you got to have you doing stuff. Knowing it ain't going to work. Why you do that? You just save me in the trouble, man. Just tell me that. You know, God ain't like that. If I'd have known it was like this being married, I never, I know God said, I know you didn't know. That's why I ain't tell you. <laughs> you wouldn't have done it. If I didn't, my wife, if I didn't know you were going to be a pastor or a preacher, I wouldn't have married. I didn't know. He don't tell you everything. He said, man, I went to church today. The preacher said, God trick us. Yeah, he does. <laughs> if he tells you, you won't do it. <laughs> Let me go on. I'm working on my comedian job, so keep that in mind now. So in the Old Testament, Jeremiah Chapter 31. This is a time when God's people, the Israelites, were about to go into captivity into Babylonia. But some of the people were, there were two kingdoms then, Israel and Judah. I try to do some teaching and, as I preach and, and exhort. But So God's people were kind of split. The only reason this happened, in the Old Testament, God's people were very, very, very hard-headed, very, uh, very stubborn. He often referred to his people as being hard-hearted because God sent his prophets. He sent all the people to tell his people how to do things. And you know what they do? The opposite. They cried for 400 years in Egypt. He sent Moses and, 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 and yeah, Moses came. They led him in the wilderness. What they do? Complain. 
all this time, get on around to the, 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 the prophets now. We got the major prophets. Jeremiah is talking to the people, the Israelites. He's talking to God's people. He said, man, listen, God, first of all, God said, who can I send to tell my people what I want to tell them? And Jeremiah, here I, I go, Lord. So here's Jeremiah showing up. And he's talking to God's people. And, and he's telling the prophet to tell the people what God is getting ready to do. And so God said, I'm going to let y'all go into captivity. I'm going to let your enemies take you over. Um, it's going to be bad over there, but I'm going to let it happen. See, sometimes God lets stuff happen in our lives. And we say, how could God let this happen? Because he's God. But it don't make sense. He don't have to. So he sent them over in captivity. And God tell them, this is why I sent you in captivity. You start to, you start to worship other gods. Do you know the biggest thing you're going to get in trouble with God for Ain't about, ain't about what you did. Now, now you get some natural consequences for some of this dumb stuff. Okay? Ain't nothing. You kill somebody. God forgive me. What God forgive me, yeah? But now the state of Florida may not. <laughs> you matter where that. Okay? Natural consequences. But God sometimes allowed things to happen in our lives to build us up. I used to really hurt. I used to go to prisons and visit, visit people, jail and prison. And do you know I find out that some people got to go to jail. Some people got to go to prison. Because sometimes that's the only time they're going to slow down long enough for God to get their attention. I've had to comfort many a parent that said, listen, baby, you did all your, God, some people got to go there. Because they won't slow down long enough. And, and people say, well, they went and got that jailhouse religion. Well, ain't nothing wrong with that. Because some people, that's the only time they're going to slow down. Some people end up in the hospital. You know why? Because there's no way God can get their attention. But the point is, in the Old Testament, God did drastic stuff to get folks' attention. Because he said, I'm trying to help you to grow closer to me and obey me. You're going to be fine if you do that. No, we ain't going to do that. So in Jeremiah, I'm going to read a few scriptures there, and then I'm going to go to the New Testament. He said, listen, in Jeremiah 31, Nah, I want to go back further than that. In Jeremiah 31, because I, I brought you up to speed, and basically he's saying to you, you're going to go into captivity. Why? Because you've been disobedient. You've been disobedient. I have tried to get, sent my prophets, sent my everybody. This long after Noah, all this stuff done happened. You would think in the human flesh, when we know what God has done, we would be obedient. It ain't in us. We ain't perfected yet. It's not in us. He says, watch what it says, Jeremiah 31. At that time, meaning the time when God was leading his people into captivity, captivity in Babylon, he says, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel and they will be my people. This after he had to allow them to go into captivity. People do bad stuff in the Old Testament always. When, when they obeyed God, they did well. When they disobeyed God, he had to deal with them. He does. And so some people, Christians now, still thinking, as long as I do good, God will be good to me. No. Uh-uh. 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 As long as I obey God, I got to do this and perform so God will be good to me. That's not true. In the New Testament, there's a guy named Jesus who came and died for us. I'm going to speed this up because I'm getting long-winded. I don't want to lose you. I want you to leave here today knowing that God loves you. And it's not about what you'll do. You'll do. You got to separate your do from your who. You are. We're not human doings. Do good all the time. We're human beings. We're in Christ Jesus. And as human beings, sometimes we're going to mess up. But in the Old Testament, Jeremiah, he said, I'm going to love you. Watch what he said. I'm going to skip the New Testament and I'm going to speed this up because I know I've shared a lot with you. I don't want to put you to sleep. Don't make me start. Don't make me start hollering up in here. But I learned how to. I learned how to preach. I, I, people would be. You get some people. They'd be going to sleep. Maybe not. And I said. And I said. God said to go. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to know how when they're in flat and how they end. Anyway. So you know. <laughs> you know see you sleeping over there. And sometimes I would do that, man, and people still wouldn't move. Still, far. I find that the old guy didn't have his hearing aid on. Damn, how, could he, how could he sleep all this hollering? Joker didn't have his hearing aid turned on. I don't know. <laughs> so in Jeremiah 31, <laughs> 31 verse. 
My wife got me this thing, see. Remember, remember me and Moses always played them glasses? My wife got smart. Like yeah, that cool? Like oh, boy, look at him. Oh, yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> Jeremiah 31, verse 3. The Lord appeared from of old to me, saying, uh, Jeremiah, Israel, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you and continued my faithfulness to you. This after they done messed up. I have drawn you with an everlasting love. Now, I use that script. Hey, be careful, people. Some people, Christians get a little scripture in them. They think they know stuff and they start spouting stuff. Know the context. But I use this scripture when I tell people, Christians, you ain't got to go beat your head, no neighbor over the head to get them to be a Christian. I tell you, God is going to come in one day and if you ain't saved, you're going to hell and you're going to spend eternity in hell and God, no, don't do that. Look here, baby. I'm going to love on you. I ain't coming out in your house every day and beat you over the head. What about? I'm going to love it. He's going to love and kindness have I drawn you. Hey, baby, what's, what's the matter? Why are you looking bad? There? Well, I got, well, look here. You ain't got no food here. Let me here. Let me give you some food. Let me, let me pray for you. Pray with you. He said, I've drawn you with what? An everlasting love. He told his people through the prophet Jeremiah, even in the Old Testament, y'all done messed up, but I'm going to still continue to draw you to me. Now, in the New Testament, that's where I really want to get. I love teaching in the New Testament because that's where the church started. And, and, and even at the end uh, of the Bible is where church started and God was talking to the church because we are in that age. We're in the church. We are the church, we're in the church. So what I would love, one of my favorite scriptures in, is in, no, ain't Daniel, that's the Old Testament, is in Romans. I love Romans. Acts and Romans. But in Romans chapter 8, because he had gone to Apostle Paul, and you know the story of Apostle Paul. If you don't call me, and we'll talk about it. But in Romans chapter 7, this guy, the Apostle Paul, was struggling. He, he had become one of the greatest Christians ever. He wrote letters to the churches after he had been converted. Stuff happens when people are converted. Are oh, you hearing me? Something happens to you. You want to be perfect. Now, just remember, when something, I told you, and get too close to the minute. You're going to want me with that mask on in a minute. But, but something happens to a person when they come to Christ. See, that's why I'm struggling with my neighbor because. Brother, you know, you know, you ain't getting it, but when a person comes to Christ, stuff begins to change from the inside out. See, my brother over there, we can tell you, boy, when before we came to Christ, boy, we went in our army. Woo. He did worse than me because I ain't go to Germany. He, he, I ain't, he got I ain't go to Germany. He got it. Anyway, so, so, but the bottom line is something happened to people when they come to Christ. While I'm saying now in the New Testament, now that we're in Christ, he started, and Paul, the apostle Paul, who had been converted, he was terrible before and then killed people, Christians, but now he's converted. He's writing to this, to the body, the church, and he's saying in Romans, in chapter 7, he talked about all the bad stuff he do. He said the stuff I want to do, that's good, I don't do it. The bad stuff I don't want to do is what I do. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who can deliver me from this body of a sin and craziness? That's what he said. Who can rescue me? And in Romans 8, when he said, praise be to God that there is now no condemnation for those who are what? In Christ. Stop beating yourself up when you mess up because you there's no condemnation. God is not here to wait to see every time you mess up, he can slap you. If you did, my face would be like this. Huh? <laughs> Heck. I, you know. But the point is, and I'm going to finish with this. Romans 8, 30. See, Paul was explaining to the church, you might have been wretched, but that's no longer your nature now. You're in Christ Jesus. You're a new creation. When God looks at you, he sees the blood of Jesus. You're clean. You're cleansed. You're, you're perfected. We ain't physically perfected, but we're spiritually perfected. He said, man, this thing in me is driving me crazy. He said, but now there's no condemnation. Now, I like as he going through Romans, he talked about how much God loves you. He talked about, I want you to understand how much God loves you. And my favorite, and my, it's so favorite, my daughter got a tattoo on her arm. People say, you can't have no tattoo. You're Christian. 
God said in the word, don't you write on your body, oh, please. No wonder young people run from, well, do you want to know, the, if, if, if you had, if it was on a game show, what's that game show, Family Feud, you know how to do survey said? Now, let me ask y'all the question, and y'all answer. And I'll tell you what the survey said. Where is the place that you can get the most condemnation from? Church. Survey said, bing, number one, the church. <laughs> Why do you people don't go to church? Because you're always talking about them. You got tattoos. You got piercings. You got the they're just too soft. If you ever want to get, if you're really in trouble, that's why Christians don't go to each other. Because you're in trouble. And you're in trouble. You don't need no Christian beating you over the head. Well, what the word said, in fact, the word says in Ephesians 6, if, you, if a brother is caught in a tra uh, transgression, caught! I saw you in the bed with such and such. If you caught you who are spiritual, meaning those of you who are spiritual mature, go restore them with the spirit of meekness. But Christian, first place, people want to condemn you. Oh, well, oh, well, brother, you, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to finish this and I'm going to stop. Romans 8 and 38. My daughter had, this is her, this is on her arm. Y'all check it out, ladies. She got on her arm. And I was so... You know, my wife, she said, how in the world you let this girl go get a tattoo? Well, I said, it's her body. What do you want me to do? I ain't got none. I'm two chicken. They ain't right on me. It hurt. <laughs> I ain't doing it. But it's her body. And then what she got written on there, Romans 8 and 38, I think it is. Where am I? Here we go. Here we go. Now, I got so many Bibles, guys. This ain't the Bible I studied with. Yeah, it is. This is amplified, but I got so many. But I don't know which one I highlight. I ain't highlight. Here we go. 838. For I am persuaded. See, when you leave here today, I want you to be persuaded. And now let's see how the amplifier said. That's why I do this. Is it? He said, I am convinced. I am 38. Well, you know, I'm having trouble. I can't see with the thing. For I am persuaded, convinced beyond doubt. And sure, I am sure. I am absolutely positive. I know what, this is what I tell people now. I know what I know. I am absolutely convinced that neither life nor death, nor, nor principalities, nor, see, it's also how I test to see who on the scripture with me. That nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God in, in Christ Jesus. When you leave here today, I want you to understand something. You ain't perfected yet, and neither am I. So when them people cut me off out there on 4-4, when you hear me say, Act like you ain't here. I ain't perfected yet. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I got a truck, now I don't run over. Cut in front of me now. Rain. No, actually, I just I said, Lord, help me. To. <laughs> but, but my point is, is that we ain't perfected yet, but I'm convinced, I'm persuaded that neither life nor death, no matter, and neither, neither the mail I get tomorrow, neither the bad news I get, neither what comes into my life, nothing yeah, shall be able, I'm persuaded, I'm sure of this, that nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Not even principalities. Not even, well, I'm going to put a curse on you. Well, you just waiting your time. You mention my name in a curse. I'll tell my daughter that the other day. You, you mention my name in a curse and, and, and you them the dim demons. I want you to go get him and then I'm going to curse him and, and they go back and they say, oh, Lord, he was Jesus, man. I ain't messing with that. You out of your mind? I ain't messing with that. Nothing. Not even principality, not even devil, devils, not even evil. No, the devil himself can show messing with you. When he mess with you, he mess with God. He come to remind you of what you did wrong. He came to remind you of your past. You remind him of his future. And God going to say, you better get your hands off of my kids. Hmm? Let somebody come to your house telling you about how wretched your kid is. You gonna sl At the very least, you're going to slam the door in the face. Depending on kind of mood I'm, I'm in, if Holy Spirit don't catch me, I might do more than that to him. He said, what about, your daughter is pregnant and she ain't got no husband. Bam! <laughs> Why 
Why? Because he said, I am convinced and persuaded. Ain't nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. People of God, all I want you to remember today, don't beat yourself up. Don't let the world beat you up. Don't let anybody beat you down because you messed up. The more you walk with Christ every day, stay in his word because it's about relationship. Know that nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. You are free to live your life. You're free to be human. You ain't got to look at, oh, God, I got to be around other Christians. Oh, I got to be careful what I say. Oh, I got to be careful what I do. True enough, out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth speaking, but let your heart continue to grow every day in Christ Jesus. But don't live no condemned life. Don't beat yourself up. I don't look good enough. I ain't thin enough. I ain't this enough. I forget that. Nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you and I praise you today. God, I just, Lord, I just feel your spirit moving and says, time to stop. But Lord, I just, you just want to do your thing, God. I don't want to leave out anything and I don't want to put in too much, but God, have your way. These are your people. We're your people, God. And we just thank you that you paid the ultimate price for us to live life. You say you came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. If we're torturing ourselves and feeling guilty all the time and being condemned by people in the world. We're not, that's not abundant life. You didn't call us to that. You called us to be free knowing how much you love us despite ourselves, despite our circumstances. And Lord, when it's hard, when we don't feel love because we've gotten ourselves in a mess and it's painful. And God, we, we, we don't know what's going to happen next. But Lord, when we're in you, your spirit comes to, to us and says, listen, I got you. Remember, there's neither life nor death nor principalities nor anything can separate you from me. So therefore, whatever this little thing is, and that's all it is, it's little. The world says it's big, but see, you know, Lord, in the overall scheme of things, how much you love me and love us. That's that little thing, tragedy, disappointment pain, hurt, is little. So help us be reminded that nothing can separate us from you. No presidential election, <laughs> no nothing can separate us from your love. So, so everything else, so everything's okay as long as we remember that. I thank you for your people, your saints who come here today faithfully, Lord to present themselves and say, hey, we're here. We want to gather together and we want to share this word together. We want to partake of this word together and, and we want to grow. Lord, just speak your word into our hearts and to remind us every moment, not just now, but every day, every moment, so we could just walk closer and closer to you, being more and more, let you, you, you're the one converting us and making us more and more your likeness every day, despite what happens. Just remind us of how much you love us. And no matter whatever ever else happened in this realm, we live in the spirit realm as well. So we know you love us. And so we're going to be okay no matter what we face. You're with us. You're in it. With us. You're in us. And so we thank you, God, today that you love us. And now, Lord, if there's anyone here today who's never experienced that, who've never surrendered their hearts and said, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sin. Therefore, I'm covered. Come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior, be my Master, and Lord, I'll now know that nothing can separate me from you. So therefore, Lord, I will know I'll have eternal life. Just come into my heart, Lord. If there's someone here today who's never had that confession, Lord, speak to their hearts right now. Speak to their hearts so that they can come to know this risen Savior who gave all for us that we may have eternal life and not be condemned in living this physical life, but yet be loved every moment. Speak to their hearts today, Lord. If you're here today and, I, and, and God is speaking to you, you said, that's me, just listen, while we're praying, just raise your hand. I just want to pray for you. See, because it's important that we acknowledge that Jesus died for our sins. It's important that we acknowledge that that's how we receive eternal life. That's how we acknowledge that we're his. Father, once again, we thank you and we praise you. And as we leave this place, we prepare to leave this place. Remember, Lord, help us remember, rather, that you love us. 
So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this gathering. Be forever glorified in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ and God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.